Hello and welcome to the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network Sunday special interview. Very excited today because on the show we have one of the best talents in the indie scene today, on the indie scene today. Very happy to welcome to the show one of my favorites, Aiden Prince. Aiden, welcome to the show, my friend. Hi, dude. Thank you for uh, for having me. I, I finally got my ass on here. I, uh, I appreciate yeah. you having me. Hey, my pleasure, man. I know I, we wanted to do this for a while and uh, couldn't connect, but I'm glad we're doing this today, man. So, um, yeah, man. So, want to talk about. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for all the fantastic logos you've been creating for me. You do a fantastic job. Uh, so, go yeah, ahead, plug the graphic design company, man. You do a fantastic job. Go ahead. Hey, man. man. Thank you. Graphic design uh, has always been a huge passion of mine, besides wrestling. So, uh, definitely something uh, you know. With wrestling being on hold, I, I've picked up quite a bit. Uh, so, yeah, you can check all my stuff out at uh, Michael Lopez Design on Facebook. Um, or check out my Instagram, or you can, you know, check out any of Lewis's stuff, Border City Wrestling stuff. Uh, I've done work for Impact Wrestling. Uh, lots of uh, lots of sweet wrestling companies, and I think that's something wrestling companies need um, is an upgrade on wrestling posters and stuff. Sometimes that's for sure. All right, cool, man. And like I say, you do a great job. All my logos are created by that man right there, Aiden Prince. So uh, I appreciate thank you so it, much. You're doing a good stuff, job man. yourself. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that, man. So how are you feeling after the, the COVID-19? Are you uh, 100% now? Brother, I, you know, I want to say I'm 100% because, like, I, I feel better, you know. Uh, but I think there's still things that linger after having something like COVID. I think it uh, – so there's days where I'm still a little tired and stuff like that. But uh, for the most part, uh, I'm, I'm coming around pretty good. There was, a, there was a rough patch there for a minute, though. Yeah, like how, how serious, if you don't mind me asking, how serious were the symptoms? Yeah. Um, see, man, I'm, I'm luckier, right? I'm, I'm only 31 years old. So, I mean, I, I got some shitty stuff. Like I had the, the, the sweats and the, uh, you know, complete lack of energy, especially for somebody like myself who's usually pretty active and, and stuff like that. And it, it, it destroyed my appetite at first. Like it, it completely took away food out of my life for a few days. So. Okay. So those symptoms, I got lucky because I didn't have any breathing issues or anything. Uh, but uh, but yeah, the the symptoms were pretty shitty, man. All right, well, I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're 100. percent And uh, it's good to see you, man. You you look good, man. You look you look good, man. Thank you, man. Uh, I'm a little tired right now. I like I woke up late. I was like, oh, poor Lewis. I'm I'm making sure I do this freaking <laughs> podcast. So if Thank I look you, like hell, I I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. So you must be excited that there's a light at the end of this tunnel uh, for this for the pandemic tunnel, uh, and things are going to get back to normal for you soon in yeah. terms of professional wrestling. Man. Yeah, for me, uh, for me, my hopes were high at the beginning of this. Uh, it was kind of like, uh, all right, we'll just we'll take a little break. It'll be nice to take a break. I've been traveling a lot, you know, so uh, like, it'll be nice to take a little break. And then it got to the point where I was like, all right, break's done. <laughs> let's, let's wrestle, you know, and then yeah. it, it kind of snowballed and snowballed. So I'm um, just seeing the little glimmer of hope we have right now is uh, a beautiful thing for me. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting back in the gym, back on the road um, more than anything. Yeah, man, yeah. I'm 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 looking forward to uh, attending some more uh, live Aiden Prince matches, man. That's that's oh, for brother, sure. Oh, you have no idea, man. Yeah, you have no so, idea. I was just saying the other day, it's like, uh, I wish I, I wish I took those moments in a little longer. You know what I mean? Like the the waiting behind the curtain, or the listening to my music, or the yeah. you know interacting with people like yourself or kids or uh, different fans. You know what I mean? Like I wish maybe I I just focused in on those moments a little bit more instead of maybe worrying about my future or worrying about other things, you know what I mean? Because now that uh, it's been a long time, it's, it's one of those things that you don't know what you got till it's gone type thing, you know? Yeah. Well, don't worry. Before you know it, you'll be behind that curtain hearing your, your music and you'll be oh, headed to buddy. the ring, man. High oh, five yeah, and fans man. on the way to the ring, man. Yeah, uh, so, so um, is there any, uh, any ETA though? Do, do you, is there a target date that, date that you hope to get back uh, in the ring? Um, I, like when I first, uh, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second, but a little side note, I moved back to Windsor. Uh, and when I got back to Windsor, um, I was training at the school kind of by myself a little bit, okay. uh, just doing my, my own thing, obviously because of rules and things like that. Right. So, um, just coming back here and getting in the ring and stuff like that a little bit. I'm sorry. What was your question again? I, I trailed off there. 
No, it's okay. I just, uh, do you have um, a, a date, a target date that you would oh, like yeah, to, yeah, that you would the, hope to get honestly, back? Honestly, bro, like, honestly, no. Um, right now, my biggest thing is I want a positive or a negative test before I come around absolutely anybody. And they okay. won't uh, give me another test for like three months. Okay. So for me, before I even entertain the idea of leaving my freaking house to train or you know, finding a quiet gym or anything like that. I, uh, I want to make sure I have that test that says this shit is out of me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, sure. I, uh, I, I have no worries that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got lucky. I, I've gotten sick twice over the past uh, three months, but both tests were negative. So I got, I, uh, sure, dodged yeah. a bullet there, man. Yeah. So, uh, but sure, I didn't know man. you were back I'm in Windsor. Win- oh, thank you, man. I didn't know you were back uh, in Windsor, man. Me, man. It was, uh, the, the, the biggest, uh, the biggest thing, right. Was, uh, my plan was to travel. It was to, you know, really start to grow. And, and what, at the time that I moved, I was killing it at NSPW in Montreal. Um, I was doing a lot at C4 in Ottawa. Uh, that area um, was, a, was a really important area. Sorry, I'm going to shut my cat up. Berkey, come here. Um, the, uh, the, the, the biggest part of all that was the fact that my career – here, I felt was at a bit of a standstill and it wasn't growing anymore. I feel like I did everything I could here. Yep. So for me, it was, I can grow. I can go show that, you know, I don't need the Windsor bubble on my back. I don't need anybody's help. I can go do this. I can do this on my own. So that was my whole thing with moving. Um, and obviously, right when I moved, we freaking entered a world pandemic, you know? So yeah. I went from traveling every weekend, training every day, eating like a machine to literally like no wrestling. I'm in a city that I, the only person I know is my girlfriend. You know, it was, uh, it was a big life shock. And I think, you know, over a year time, it takes a toll on you. It takes a toll on your relationship. It takes a toll on, you know, personal shit. So yeah. um, Windsor is Prince City. Windsor's home. Yeah. So sometimes you got to go home to find yourself, you know? So um, I made it back here. Um, and I mean, things uh, things have been good for the most part besides getting COVID in this damn city. But, you okay. know. <laughs> okay. Well, when, when you're ready, since you're back in Windsor, we need to hook up and do a, a face-to-face interview, man. Yes, bro. I would uh, I would absolutely love that. Okay, man. Great. Let's do it, man. Uh, so um, – how how badly do you want to hit somebody with a 450 splash, man? You must just be uh, dying dude, just to get up there and hit somebody with a 450. Dude, it's crazy. It's uh, it's crazy. I uh, right uh, when I moved, actually, um, and everything at first started going, and when, when really none of us knew what was going on, I had stopped up in Kitchener to uh, hang out with Ben uh, a little bit, and uh, he had his school open, so I was able to set up a crash mat, and I can honestly say for the first time. In a very, very long time. I, it was luckily a crash mat, but I smacked my face off the freaking <laughs> mat pretty hard. <laughs> I, uh, I remember I hit my face and I kind of like looked around and I'm like, shit, I do that again. So I went up and I, I did it a few more times. It was like, don't, don't let me forget how to do this. Like, this is it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, it's, it's one of those things that I feel like a piece of me is missing. I, I honestly do. And I know that sounds cheesy, but. Uh, literally since I was a child, I have been cocky about being a wrestler. I have said, I'm going to be a wrestler. Um, and there was nothing, nothing that anybody could say or do that was going to stop me from being a wrestler. Um, and in these circumstances, it's like the world has found a way to stop us. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been a, it's been a weird adjustment. That's for sure. But I, I can't wait to get to that top rope again. Yeah, no, it'll be, like I said earlier, it'll be, before you know it, you'll be on the top rope looking at somebody and 450 splash, one, two, three, hand raised, back to the dressing room. And, and I feel it when you say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so Jake Christ put you over in a recent interview. Um, yes. That must have made you feel great. And I'll let you return the favor here. Uh, what are your thoughts on Jake Christ? Jake Christ. Well, first of all, let me tell you a story about... Uh, I was a 17 year old kid. I was backyard wrestling on the internet. That was my thing. That's all I did. And um, a couple guys that I backyard wrestled with 
we're actually going over to the States to do professional shows. Um, because we, we did take backyard wrestling pretty serious. We had some wrestling training friends. Um, so we were viable as pro wrestlers, you know, minus the bodies and the gear and stuff like that. And, <laughs> yeah, and really yeah. just the overall smarts of wrestling. Right. But we were kids nonetheless wrestling and they saw my videos and said that they would book me at a promotion called hybrid wrestling in the States. Um, so like I said, I was like 17, I went over there and, um, I don't even remember who they worked with, but they were a group called Irish Airborne, uh, who was Jake Christ and Dave Christ. Um, and instantly I was obsessed with them because they were the first, I think I seen them before I did the Motor City Machine Gun. So it was the first team I seen that was doing sweet combos. And I think they did like a lung blower into like a, like a, like a senton. Like there was just all these crazy things that really drew me to them. And okay. I remember in the back asking them for a picture and they were more than cool to give me this picture. Um, so fast forward years and years later, um, I get the opportunity to work with them. Um, and I remember I, I told Johnny Bravo, I said, Hey man, like after the match, I said, Hey, am I, a, am I a nerd? If I go show him the picture from when I was a kid, <laughs> like, am I, am I a nerd? <laughs> And he's like, no, bro, like Jake and Dave are, are good dudes. Like, I think they'd think it's pretty cool. Like, go show them. So I go over and I, I show Jake and he's like, and I'll never forget this because a lot of times when you meet big name wrestlers or someone you look up to or anything like that, like there is the cool ones that will talk to you. But then there's the other ones that are like, yeah, yeah, kid, I've heard I'm the best from everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Jake got so legitimately excited about this picture that he's like, come with me. And we went and found Dave to take another picture um, wow. of, of the three of us standing together. So it was that right there kind of to me tells you the kind of dude that Jake is. So then fast forward to our match at Impact. Every match I did at Impact was very much me sitting there going, yes, sir, I'll do whatever you want. I'm just happy to be here. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and Jake... Jake wouldn't let that happen. Jake was like, what do you want to do? Well, let's get you over. Let's get your stuff in. Let's do this. Let's do this. And Jake, just winning the X Division title the night before, gave me so much in that match that that match changed the game for me moving forward. I mean, I, I don't like taking credit for it at all, but we got to the back and we got a standing ovation. And I put that all on Jake because... I mean, he pulled something out of me in that match that, you know, that a lot of guys wouldn't let me do. So that, that was the reason I was able to showcase to Impact and to a lot of fans around the world that I belong in the X Division. I just, I'm just not there. You know what I mean? That's, that's, uh, that's the thing. And, and, and hearing Jake put me over on that podcast, it was, it's a surreal feeling, man, because I went back to that 17 year old kid watching them at hybrid, you know, and it's, it's a very, very, very cool thing. So honestly, whatever Jake does, I, I, I hope that uh, he, he, he takes over the world, man, because he's, he's a really good dude, a very good dude. And I, I owe a lot to him for sure. Man, that's awesome, man. That was a great match, by the way, with you and uh, Jay Christ. And I was watching the match uh, prior to um, prior to the interview, and there was a spot that I, that I forgot about that I saw that I, I'm going to ask you about. You had jumped off the top turnbuckle to the outside, and he hit you with a super kick, but your feet slipped out from under you, and you looked like you hit yes. hard. Was that did that look worse than it actually was? Um, it's funny because it, you'll remember this. After I took that, I laid there for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember us going over it, and they said to me, "Can you jump from the top rope and just land on your feet?" So I climbed up there and I jumped right off and I landed on my feet. So I was like, "Yeah, man." So he's like, "When you land on your feet." I'll connect the super kick. You'll be fine. When I, we did it, the mat was wet. So I thought I was landing on my feet as normal. And it yeah. was just like the old slippy slide, you know, like yeah. slip right under. But uh, I, I couldn't breathe at all. So I was, I was very lucky that I got to lay there. I think it was nine seconds or something before yeah, yeah, I yeah. had to roll back in because I, I hit hard, man. And, but it's like the adrenaline and – you know, like the, the, the crowd and 
Jake pumping me up the entire match, you know, like he, he was cool even in there. So it was, uh, it's one of those things you don't, you don't feel at the time, but after I definitely felt it. Yeah. I, okay. I, I wiped out pretty hard. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, it, so it was as bad as it looked, man. Yeah. That was, that was oh, a bad, yeah, bad bump. Oh man. yeah. Bad bump. But so, I, I couldn't be, couldn't have been happier at that moment. That's no, like I said, fantastic <laughs> match. And I think it's on, I think it's on YouTube. So anybody that hasn't seen that match, get to YouTube and watch that match like immediately. Yes. Immediately, it is man. also on uh, Impact Plus as well. Impact Plus as well, yes, yes. Yeah. So let's yeah. talk about Impact. You know, you've had multiple matches with, with Impact, yet they haven't signed you, which I think is a huge mistake. Uh, Jay Christ in that podcast, I think he kind of said that they should have signed you after that match. Why do you think they haven't signed you yet? Um, I think I think in wrestling or in in jobs in general, um, I think if you know somebody too much. They know more about you and they know who you're, you really are as a person. And maybe that kind of sways their decisions on things. So when I first started wrestling, um, I wasn't the hard worker that I am now. I wasn't the, uh, I, I don't want to say I wasn't as passionate, but I let people's opinions um, affect the way I worked. I let it affect my emotions. I let it affect, you know, my confidence if that makes sense and over the years I think I have started to learn like oh like I'm better at this than I give myself credit for you know what I mean and I think that kind of given me gave me the confidence to travel more to to try to get my name out there more to do more podcasts to carry myself differently and I think that maybe you know not necessarily Scott um uh, and and the higher ups of impact I'm just going to shut this because I got a train coming one sec sure Um, not necessarily Scott doesn't think I can cut it, but I think a lot of Scott and the higher ups worry that maybe Aiden Prince can't do it. And I've, uh, I really want to let this train pass. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm right going to hear, I'm, I'm going to hear the train shortly anyway. So. Oh, okay. Good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be. Um, pe- yeah. But, uh, so yeah, I, I honestly think that maybe at, at a time, you know, when around the time of the Aries match, um, around that time, I think they were a little worried that if we, you know, invest in Aiden Prince, is Aiden Prince going to invest in himself, you know? And I've, I've fought a very long time now to prove that I'm not that person anymore, that I'm not, you know, an emotional little kid anymore. I'm a grown-ass man who's a professional wrestler okay. that belongs on your TV screen. And that's, that's – I – I know in my heart and in my confidence now that I know I can do it and I know I belong there. It just, uh, for some reason, they, they don't see that same thing that I see. And that's, that's okay. Because in my eyes now, I've learned to realize if, if I was that big of a hot commodity, bro, then I'd be there, you know? So maybe it's something that I'm not doing right. Maybe it's something I need to look deep in myself and find. Or maybe impact isn't the place. You know what I mean? Like I, I think putting all your eggs in that basket and obsessing over impact and worrying about getting me signed there and, and all those things, I think that has taken a toll on me. And I think honestly, like if, if it's not going to happen there, I've said it before, I'll say it again. It'll happen somewhere eventually for me because I, I know in my heart that I belong there. And I also know in my heart that I'm not the first person that's been missed, right? I, I know that I've seen guys get passed up there and go on to be big deals or, or go on to do big things. So I have no hard feelings. I have no ill will in any way because to me, those little opportunities that I've got are the reason I have followers. They're the reason I'm looked at the way I am. They're the reason I've gotten opportunities that I have. So there's no, there's no anger or anything. I just, I truly believe in my heart that I belong there and that I would steal the dang show. You know, it's just, it's just, but I'm also a wrestler that and most yeah. wrestlers believe their own bullshit. So who knows, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, now do you feel impact in waiting this long? Uh, and you kind of alluded to it. Uh, I feel that they're, they're going to miss out on the Aiden Prince boat because uh, sooner or later, a, another major promotion such as MLW AEW, NXT, even New Japan, Pro Wrestling US, they're going to contact you. 
you know, yeah, and I'm sure you'll be so. interested. So do you, do you agree that they're w- waiting this long? They have a chance at uh, missing, missing out on Aiden Prince. I, you know, like, I think so, man, because for me, it's, you know, like I, I, I don't know what it is because, you know, I've, I've had those talks. I've asked those questions. Like, what, what do I got to do? You know what I mean? Like, what do I got to do? And I honestly think the only way that I'm ever going to be able to prove to them, you know, that I belong there is when it's too late for me to be there. And that's, again, man, like I said, it's, it's not a hard feelings thing. It's just like, hey, I'm going to do it somewhere. We'll make sure it happens. Um, I just, I really, I do really in my heart, honestly, wish it was there because I love the locker room. I, you know, am obviously from their school. I am close with most of those guys, you know, so that, yeah. that is definitely where I want to be. But if it's not there, it, we'll make sure it's somewhere. Don't you worry. Okay. Cause, cause Corp Bauer, he has a tremendous eye for talent, man. And I, I think you'll be a great fit in MLW. Thinking about matches against Myron Reed, uh, Leo Rush, uh, Zenshi. Uh, your your thoughts on that and, and those guys? Um, I, uh, it's funny, up until about last year, I hadn't watched too much MLW stuff. But when I started uh, really becoming a fan of Pillman Jr., I watched a lot of his MLW stuff. That and when Ace was there, I was watching a lot of his stuff there. And uh, yeah, it does seem like it's uh, the, the production is great. The talent is great. It's, a, it's another place that I feel I could excel, you know what I mean? And I, I see tweets, I see stuff, you know, I, I get tagged in a lot of MLW stuff. Um, and I mean, let's, let's say, say it for what it is. You know, I am Canadian. That's also a big, uh, a big thing with the impact thing because you got to remember – or MLW, the, you got to remember, right? Like I said, if I'm that hot of a commodity, then it makes sense for them to put all that money into me, right? But if I'm not going to fully return that money in the work visas and all that stuff that goes into it, then it might be, you know, better for them to hold off right now. So, okay. you know, don't get me wrong. I, I, I get it from both ends. You know what I mean? I get it. I just, I truly believe if I had a little bit of fire under me and a little bit of help, and some backing from somebody like that. You put a mic in my hand, you, you know, bust out the vignettes. You let me showcase what I can do out there. And guys like Senshi and uh, Loki, I mean, and, uh, you know, Pillman Jr., Ace, uh, even Myron Reed, you know, these are all guys I've been around. And, and I know I can go toe to toe with them, you know, Jordan Oliver. So it's, it's one of those things. I think, you know, can it, being Canadians hold me back in some ways, you know, but to be honest, I'd rather be Canadian right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, man. Uh, well, like I said, sooner or later, one of these companies are going to contact you and uh, I'm sure uh, we're going to see you on one of these major promotions very, very soon, man. Um, I appreciate that, buddy. My pleasure, man. My pleasure. So, so how do you feel about the impact to AEW partnership right now? Are you following it? Dude, I think it is the coolest, the coolest thing I've ever seen. Anytime, you know, egos get set aside and there's business done that way. And, um, you know, it, it would be somebody like Scott and Don to put this together because yeah. I remember years ago, years ago, I don't know if you were here um, around that we did New Japan versus BCW here in Windsor. Yeah, I wasn't here yet. I wasn't in Windsor yet. Dude, it was insane. We had Carl Anderson. We had Nakamura. We had Okada. Oh, wow. Uh, Dude, it was crazy. All the way down to Red Shoes, the ref. We had we had them all, dude. It was uh, it was awesome. I was in a dark match. I uh, it was one of my first first BCW shows, so I was still lugging the ring and uh, doing the dark matches on those shows. And I mean, uh, that that right there shows that Scott's open to the partnerships and open to you know Scott's a fan at heart, like us. You know what I mean? So seeing BCW next to New Japan or Impact next to AEW on a piece of paper looks freaking cool. And it's something we'd all create in a video game. So the fact that these guys brought it to life is the coolest shit ever. It was so cool. You know, when, when this pandemic is finally over, do you think we'll see more uh, BCW shows? Because I know we have when, when the wrestling was happening, I know Scott was concentrating on Impact. We didn't see too many BCW shows. But do you think we'll see more? Um, in uh, as soon 100%, as able to? man. You know, as much as Scott does a lot of work, we have a very solid crew here when it comes to the BCW shows. So, um, uh, you know, there, there's a couple of the dudes that, 
including myself, that put a lot of work um, into those shows. And Scott puts a lot of trust in us into those shows. Um, so you'll definitely see, you'll definitely see some BCW shows again. It's just, uh, you know, maybe they're not, uh, maybe you won't see your, your Booker T's and stuff. We, you'll continue to see more impact stars. Um, but, uh, I mean, you'll, you'll definitely see BCW again. Good, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. I haven't been to a show in such a long time, man. It's, I'm itching to get back to a show, man. I'm itching to get back to a show. So when this pandemic's finally over, do you have a, an opponent in mind that you might want to face or it doesn't matter? I do. Okay. I do, man. Because uh, for a lot of years, I thought to myself, you know, I can't wait until the day comes when I'm good enough to face, you know, the BCW champion or I'm good enough to be in the main event or I can honestly say that the crowd cares about me enough to put me in the main event. I used to, I used to talk about that stuff over, over the years. Um, and I think I've proven over the last few years, um, being in multiple BCW main events, the crowd being the way it is, things like that, that there's, there's nowhere, you know, I I'd rather be than the main event. And there's a guy walking around with something that I believe belongs to me, and that's okay. the BCW championship. Um, and with his recent change of attitude, yep. um, I think that uh, it's realistic to see Aiden Prince versus Cody Diener for the BCW championship. So uh, I definitely think that uh, DDT 450 needs to happen again, again. Absolutely, man. Now you got me excited again. Now I'm looking forward to that match, man. So that's going to be the first main like event, first BCW main event. Cody Diener, the new Cody Diener defending against Aiden Prince. Bro, could you imagine? Could you imagine? And and you're walking out with that title, right? You're walking out with I'm the title. I'm walking out with that title. I don't okay. care if I got to jump off Joe Doring's shoulders. I'll, I'll, walk out of, <laughs> I'll walk out of there with that title. That dude is massive, man. He's 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 awesome. I love Joe Doring, man. I was why he's, uh, he's a great guy. Yeah, man, I I would watch him uh, in in all Japan, and he's awesome out there. Glad to see him in Impact now, man. But uh, yeah, he be... uh, he was actually he won't take credit for it, but he uh, he was one of my trainers when I when I first started. Between uh, him being around and throwing me around and stuff like that, I I I, uh, I can thank Joe for my selling skills. That's for sure because he whooped my ass into uh, into shape <laughs> multiple times. Okay, man. Okay. Uh... Did you take one of those clotheslines? It must have from I did. I took multiple oh. clotheslines. I always oh, love to tell this story. Um, obviously, in wrestling, I'm a little guy. So me whipping Joe Doring off the ropes is never a realistic situation, right? So I, uh, I used to grab Joe. I'd be nervous and young, and I'd grab Joe and try to throw him into the corner, and he'd always do the big man stop. You know, he wouldn't let me go anywhere. But I knew if I threw Joe and Joe let me throw him into that corner – if I ran at him, I was taking the biggest big boot you've ever seen. So uh, it, Joe had his – Joe's a, a very unique guy. He's very quiet. He's a, he's a, he's a giant, you know what I mean? But he's a, he's a sweetheart of a dude too, for sure. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to uh, seeing him in action um, when you guys come back to St. Clair College. I'm, I'm, I'm itching for that. That'd be another cool one, man. Me versus Doring. Could you imagine the, the story there? That'd be Oh, a, gosh. That would be – that would be, be – and uh, but that'll be a great match. But you would hit the four fifty on him. One, two, three. It'll be over. And uh, definitely. There you go, man. <laughs> and you take his hat and you just run off to the back. <laughs> oh god, that looked hilarious. <laughs> uh, so tell me about the Twitch channel. You, you started a Twitch channel. What was your inspiration behind dude, that, dude? So lately, like I'll be honest, man. Like when I first got back to Windsor, like I obviously went right into quarantine almost. So I was uh, I was stuck up in here, bored, thinking about fans, thinking about friends. Um, and then a buddy of mine, Big Ben started, uh, started doing the Twitch thing and I, I checked it out and I noticed a lot of the fans from the cross body shows, um, or just local fans were in these chats. And I was like, man, like, this is a cool way for me to talk to everybody and, uh, you know, say what's up to everyone. I'm not a huge gamer myself, but I am a graphic designer that loves to create stuff in the WWE games. Yeah. So I figured uh, we'll start a Twitch channel if anybody comes in to hang out. And uh, surprisingly, it's been doing pretty well. It's uh, like I said, I don't know how long it'll last. I'm not a big gamer, but I mean, it, it is cool to talk to everybody and to, um, you know, show off some of the, the guys I've created and stuff in the game. But yeah, the, 
the Twitch world is uh, interesting, but very cool. Very cool. So what's the THT Championship Tournament all about? What's, what's going on there? So um, a while back, it was probably a good six months ago, um, I wanted to make everybody in the games. Like I wanted to, uh, like, you know, put together a tournament or a King of the Ring thing or something and just take screenshots of it and whatever and post it on Facebook. Um, and then when the Twitch thing happened, um, I started messing around with it. Well, a good buddy of ours, Brady, contacts me and says, hey, man, we're doing this THT podcast thing. I want to sponsor you. If you need anything for your Twitch channel, if you need anything uh, to keep things going, you know, I'm your guy. I'll hook you up. Just, you know, rep our stuff, join our podcast, and, and we'll work together. So I was like, I'll give it a go. You know what I mean? So right. I've, uh, I started showing some of the characters online and then the reactions were pretty cool. Like people wanted to download them. People wanted to see more. Um, and I, I got nothing going on, man. I'm bored. So I put together a little graphic, whatever. And, uh, we made the THT championship to, to thank the sponsor type thing. And, okay. uh, I've, I've been going on late at night and playing these matches and, and, and stuff like that. So we did, uh, we did crown the first champion in Lionel night. He okay. has lost it to puff already. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's cool to, you know, tap into a, a different atmosphere that I've never really, you know, j jumped into in this Twitch thing. And I'm a creative guy. And as you know, I haven't had much graphic work right now because there's no wrestling shows. So it's been, uh, it's been a cool way to connect with everybody again, you know? All right, cool, man. Cool. It's very cool stuff, man. And you are a very good graphics guy. I'll say it I again, agree. man. Uh, great you, stuff, man. man. Anyone listening to graphic work, just go to this guy. Go to Aiden Prince, man. Please, he will, man. Please. He will hook you up, man. Uh, so if you can have one dream match, anybody, living or dead, who, who would it be? Will Ospreay. Will wow. Ospreay every time. Wow, that yes. would be Will amazing. Will Ospreay or Amazing Red Okay, uh, would probably be um, a huge dream match. But I also always said, you know, I would go to these fair shows um, or I would go to, you know, smaller indie events that would bring in legends, you know what I mean? And I would always watch the matches. And I never got in those matches because I'm a high flyer. So they always wanted to see me with the flippy kids, right? And then you see the generic heavyweight guy against the Bushwhackers or, you know, like one of these old school legend guys. But for me, I always be bummed out because I know I can go with an older guy too. Like I don't have to flip and flop everywhere, you know, like, so I definitely would love to wrestle some of these legend guys that I get to meet on these shows, you know, someone like a Booker T okay. or, um, you know, like I got to work with Simon Gotch, which was great. Okay. Uh, Guys like that, that, you know, when I leave the ring, I feel like, wow, I, you know, I, I could hang with this guy or I could hang with that guy. So somebody like Osprey or a Trey Miguel or Amazing Red, I think I could really showcase my high flying capabilities that everybody knows I have. But I think if I was to wrestle, you know, like a Booker T or somebody like a James Storm, or somebody like that, I can show that, you know, I'm not just a flippy guy. I'm also a wrestler, wrestler at the end of the day, you know. So um, I really hope that when we get back to wrestling, I get a couple of those matches that I can showcase I'm not just a flippy dude. There is wrestlers out there that are just flippy dudes, and yeah. I'm not one of them. And I've never really had that chance to, to showcase that, you know. So. Okay. So add a little twist to the last question. If you could have one dream match with any Japanese wrestler, who would it be? I'm a, I'm a big uh, Japanese wrestling fan. Any Japanese wrestler, who would it be? Let me ask you that. Do you consider Jay White a Japanese wrestler? Just because he's he's literally... Or, or do we got to go full Japanese here? Um, I was... Because you, you said Will Ospreay. You said well, he is in New Japan Pro Wrestling. I was thinking full Japanese. Right. Full Japanese Kota yeah. Ibushi. There you go. Okay. Yes. I was thinking uh, I, I was thinking Hiromu Takahashi, but, but Kota Ibushi. Takahashi is awesome. would be another one, but... See, I've been a huge fan of Kota for years because of the backflip, backflip. You know, like you do the backflip and dude rolls away and then he hits yeah. him with the... Yeah. That, literally, I was obsessed with uh, with trying to do that. The cat is hiding behind the green screen, so don't mind. Uh, <laughs> it's, see okay. That it's okay, man. <laughs> uh, so, last question, and then uh, we can wrap this up. Goals for 2021. What do, you have, what do you hope to have accomplished by the end of 2021? 
brother, at this point, you know, usually, you, you know me, you've known me for a few years now. Usually I have all these big goals, these big plans, these whatever. And honestly, I've, I've told everybody that's asked me this question, this year is about showcasing a little bit more who Mike is, who it is my real name. <laughs> and, yeah. um, you know, uh, letting Aiden Prince grow and do his thing. But until wrestling is in full force and everything, it's time to get to know Mike a little bit because I uh, – I think the the my fans and everybody knows Aiden Prince very well, but the real person, the one who's laughing behind these video games, is yeah. Mike. You know what I mean? And uh, okay. I think that it's uh, important to me to showcase who I really am as well, compared to just seeing Aiden Prince. You know, so um, you guys will see a little bit more of an influencer side out of me in the next year or so. I'd like to uh, maybe try to jump on some YouTube type stuff maybe talk wrestling like you do, okay. um, you know, because I, I it, it has been my life. And yes, I'm a wrestler, but I also am a fan at heart. You know what I mean? So I think, uh, I think I have a lot to say about wrestling and, you know, I have a lot of cool friends and I think that uh, some vlog stuff or, uh, you know, show, showcasing myself a little more would be, uh, would be beneficial to all of us. <laughs> all right man very cool very cool man so before we go anything you want to plug i know we spoke about the twitch channel uh social media yes. you want to plug anything uh, go right ahead man all right man you guys know the deal you can find most of my stuff at aiden prince on the internet i believe my instagram is at the aiden prince um you can check our podcast out it is the tht podcast you can find that uh, on instagram uh they're doing a lot for me, so I definitely want to plug them. Um, also, twitch.com, twitch.tv slash Mike Lopez 450. I'm usually up late at night, chilling on Twitch. That's where you can find me. Um, and yeah, I always like to say it. Thank you, everybody, for uh, all the support over the years. And uh, yeah, 2021. All right, man. Well, Aiden, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so glad we got together. And uh, we're going to have to get together face-to-face -to -face, uh, in the next few months and do, a, do another interview, man. Definitely, man. I, uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Louis. All right, man. So this has been the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network Sunday special interview. Again, want to thank my guest, Aiden Prince. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye. <laughs>